I, I feel that. How do you feel about the um, the the so I'm, what I'm trying to say here is like the criticism in TSM, like how harsh it is, like how direct is the criticism? That's the best way to, to phrase it. Um, how direct is the criticism within TSM? Because I've heard uh, rumors that, you know, a lot of times there'll be a, a problem with you as a player. There'll be, but, but instead of like being able to like address it and try to fix it, sometimes they'll just kind of like be like, oh, well, this person can't do this. This person can't do that. Is this something that's actually true? It depends who it's coming from. I think Reggie was there at times with like harsh criticism, and in our lineup, I think most of us were able to to take it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, uh, I I don't I personally don't have an issue with that. Maybe I'll show it a bit in the moment sometimes because sometimes you're just out of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I'm trying to think about it, and I actually don't. It was like a good mix, you know, because there was like some members of the staff who were like very not direct and very vague with their feedback mm -hmm. and that made it harder that made the whole culture like different i would say compared to let's say it was, it was just the players and it was being led by the players then i think it would have been really direct when you have like bjergsen uh Dardark, even broken yeah. blade like uh, and i would be fine with that as well um mm -hmm. so yeah I've basically heard that that is the weird thing about TSM is there's like two modes. If you're with the coaching staff, it's like it's like if you go into an office scenario and there's never no one your boss in in a real office scenario is never going to scream at you like you fucking you five. The, what he's going to do is he's going to use like super passive aggressive corporate speech like I've called you in for your performance review here because we don't feel as though you're reaching certain metrics and we'd like you to take this different course to learn and he's going to say it right but you know really what he means to say is like I'm really disappointed in what you've done and you failed and you need to get your shit together or I'm going to fire you but he has to say it in like this very polite manner where he's having to soften the blow so as a result though the impact might not be big but then. The other mode is, like Kobe just said, entirely unprompted. And this is the same when all the players have been there. That isn't a story from like season five of Reginald coming in. Apparently that happens every year. So the problem is this. When Reginald used to come in and be like the drill sergeant and tell people, get your shit in order, or you're doing it wrong, or what the fuck are you doing? Or even just directly confront people in front of everyone about what they're doing. The difference is they won the championship after that. So whether or not you liked it, you could go with like that Michael Jordan approach of like, well, that's just what it took to win. The problem is if you then fail, it's like now that's entirely up for criticism. Like you can say, is that the right approach? Because what's weird is what Kobe just said there is what most Europeans seem to prefer. They just like it when the players are allowed to directly confront each other. So the notion is, instead of us all pussyfooting around it in case people's feelings get hurt, if 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 Dardock fucked up his path in and did it in a way that Kobe doesn't understand, it's it's going to be a lot quicker if Kobe just says, like, Dardock, what were you doing with that early path? And then he can just explain it directly. Like, let's just cut the bullshit out. Like, a lot of Europeans like that, Wes, as we found out many times I mean, on this show. A lot of North American players get really offended if you sort of, like, directly question them like that. I mean, I agree with that. But I would also say the issue for me was... Um... Like what you said about Bjergsen before, if like when you you went on on some story about when he came to NA, he was yeah, shy. Yes. I feel like for me it was kind of the same when I came into the team. Uh, like I was very comfortable in Splice for four years. I moved uh, continent, I moved to TSM, like the biggest brand, and I was also fucking nervous when I came in there because I I was just not comfortable and like going against other players' opinions or like the whole TSM culture. There was like times. Things I didn't agree with, and I just didn't really feel confident enough to go against it until like too late, I think, and then it even backfired at some points because like at some point I just lost it as well. I'm like, I cannot, I cannot fucking do this. You're telling me to do it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think it would have if I was on board as well from like week one, then it would have made things easier as well. But I was also, yeah, as I said, just nervous coming in, so we didn't yeah. really develop that culture from the, be the beginning and if we did i think we would have improved a lot faster yeah I i've got a question which is uh essentially it's why don't any coaches work within tsm because we've seen a bunch of coaches come in we had song come in got fired after a split or after a year uh uh zix came in he was, won a bunch of championships right like people heralded him as a really great coach uh gets fired um after a year peter zhang came in fired after a split, and now they're just back to Parth coaching the team. So it feels like no coaches that they've ever had work with TSM. Like, they can't find anyone. And all these 
coaches are semi-accomplished at least coming in, right? Like Song uh, what, took Immortals, which was a seventh place team, to second place to finals um, in, the, in the split before he joined TSM. Uh, I mentioned Zix winning championships. Peter Zhang at least, you know, coached a, a, a team that was, you know, get, carried by a juggler to a, a first place. Right? <laughs> oh, season, I mean, you know, okay. Let's just talk about that. But uh, realistically, like, why don't coaches actually fit with this team? It seems like no one can coach it. Well, it's it's a good question. I, I don't really have uh, the answer for it. But what I think is, it's very different what every player needs from a coach. Like, um, at least for myself, I feel like the coaching staff I had in Splice was like really good for me because we had a lot of different coaches. There was more some I was more comfortable with than others. I could talk one-to-one get feedback one-to-one -one a lot of times. And I think, as I said, it's just really different. And I don't think in a team like TSM, when you go in with five veterans, you don't need a guy who's going to tell you how to play the game. You just need someone that can give structure and like control discussions, come up with uh, good points here and there. But that was not really what we had. Like I think Peter Seng's problem was just uh, not being direct at all. He was like... Uh, too vague with his feedback and the players didn't like it too much mm -hmm. basically but yeah I, I don't have the answer to your question no i'm sorry uh, do, do you think that any of the the coaching problems stem from this idea of like hey if shit starts going bad reggie's gonna come in kick your ass out and like you're you're gonna just be pretty much like riding the bench so to speak like do you think that that pressure from upper management has anything to do with the fact that coaches fail from your perspective i mean probably has uh, something to say yeah for sure because yeah. it's very few people already that can handle the pressure and when it's this pressure that just seems like more than anything like um if you fail with tsm it's like 10 times worse than if you fail for most other teams um so yeah that could definitely be a thing makes sense i mean i don't know if you have any uh, any more uh, questions know. on uh, on tsm thorn but I'm, I'm i'm ready to jump to, to lec unless you've got something <laughs> Um, I think it's more just when I'm thinking about like the coaches they have in that team. I also feel like this is like essentially this built essentially I, I kind of build this into my theory on what TSM's done with all the junglers, which is aside from Dardock, they've always recruited people who seemed like they had the personality to be the support of type jungler who end up getting bared into the bitch that just fucking has to do whatever Bjergsen not says but just wants presumably of what they have to think he wants on some like fucking next level guess what your girlfriend is thinking because if she tells you then she won't respect you as much like sort of level of shit so yeah. my problem in that scenario is I also personally think this is where Reginald just needs to get the fuck out I told him this years ago when he was actually still winning I told him dude that can only work in the short term and if I'm being honest with you it's only working now because you got the best players like that was working that scream at them approach to get them together at the end of the split when you had like all the top players i said if you ever have a time where you don't like you're gonna have to have a coach that does that stuff so one thing i feel like is i feel like the the tsm all because like look at the people they recruited so song how fluent is he in english i've almost never yeah. seen him in interviews and stuff is he i'm assuming like vaguely fluent like minorly i, I think he's better now but it was like pretty bad back then i mean that was just <clears throat> literally he had literally been in na for six months at that point so yeah. And comes from a culture where by default they all have to respect you and just do whatever you say. So that's already mm -hmm. a nightmare if you put them in a team like TSM. Then we're putting in Zix. Zix was the guy where everyone on his team is like his best pal. Like they all just like him and they all get along and they all sing fucking Kumbaya and finish fifth place because mm -hmm. of CLG. Like that's not that's not a high pressure organization. He mm -hmm. never had any pressure. He was allowed to literally fail for like a year after that and do nothing. So everyone was cool with that. Like you, you can't bring people in who either don't have like the right vocal aspect, the right mentality, who want to be friends with the players. Because none of these things can exist in TSM. Like, as you're saying, Dom, if the whole time I'm coaching, it's like the old fucking Vaud villain. Someone might put out that, like, sheep crook and jack my neck off. Like, I'm going to be fucking think thinking about that and looking to one side as I'm doing everything. So one problem I have in NA as well is too many of these coaches want to be, like, pals with the players. It's totally inappropriate. Like, in that scenario, it's not, like, as strict as, like, I'm your boss if I'm your coach. Because sometimes we're both, like, sort of, like, sometimes we're colleagues, essentially, and I just have a different role. Like, maybe I'm more communicative. I'll set the plan up and you follow it. That doesn't always mean I'm your boss. But if I was someone's boss, the reason I can't be your friend is because that could actually fuck both of us up. 
Like it could fuck you up because now you might take liberties or you might just not be as serious or you might not be as professional because we're friends. But it can also fuck me up because now I give you like extra chances. I'm not as hard on you. Like in that scenario, the reason why there has to be a separation is something Monty said years ago. And it's actually why Loco originally had that like beef with us when he joined TSM. Because the reason Monty thought people who were really young and inexperienced couldn't be coaches is because if you try to be pals with the players, like there's not enough distance for you to be able to criticize them properly. You can't basically call the guy out. You can't say, I expect something more of you. To do that to a friend is fucked up. To say to your friend, you know, I expect you to just get like way better at your job otherwise, well, or what? Or not your friend anymore. That'd be fucked up, wouldn't it? So in that scenario, like I feel like trying to be pals with the players, mm -hmm. I, I don't like that approach. Like I haven't seen it. I pretty swear, all the teams that have been champions, I haven't seen many that that was the approach. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I had something like this with uh, Duke, who's uh, like, was my coach in Splice one year ago. Like, this guy would really annoy me sometimes, and I would not agree with him on a lot of things, but it was not until after the year that I realized, okay, this guy actually really pushed me at times where maybe if I didn't get that push, I wouldn't have done so yeah, well. Yeah. So that's, it, it's hard to realize in the moment, but after, when you see it, it's it definitely has a lot of good things.